Hello guys, I am Razui from Nettles. Today I'm going to show you something that I had just discovered. I was have been uh, I have a server, a Minecraft server, and of course uh, to run one you need a run.bat file. In my server folder here. Ah, Jesus my scroll bar is gonna be whack. Oh, never mind, I don't need this right here. If I edit my run bat, the information that was needed to put in there was this right here. Everyone here. I was thinking about it and started messing around, you know, if this can run a craft bucket jar for the server. What other things could it do? So I started thinking about it. And I figured out that whenever I had first started using the server, I kept getting an error that told me that Java was not an eligible program or whatever. Um, so I figured out that this part here was actually the program name inside the batch file. Um, as I as I was toying with my Minecraft application uh, about a few weeks ago, in the profile section it gave me the option to use a JVM argument, which is Java memory, and it was something like this something like these two right here and so I ended up going on the internet and searching that up and that was um and what that did was tell me how much memory I was allowing the program to use the Java to use and um, what this here did is it is apparently it is apparently running what I think may be the file extension type which is a jar file and it is running my craft it is running my uh, craft bucket file which is in the folder if you guys can see right here that's my craft bucket um, and then this pause down here kept the window from closing apparently I've discovered that from toying around also so I got to thinking if I could do that with a server what I could run, I might have been able to run other Java applications. And I'm also kind of sad that the console for Minecraft, the development console, is really unusable by most people. Un unaccessible, uneditable, untrackable. Well, um, I went toying around and I found out there is a way you can using that same batch file method. And today I'm going to teach you how to do it. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to right click anywhere empty in a folder or desktop. You want to select new and then you want to select text document right here. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to open that up. You're going to go to file, going to go to save as, and we are going to save this as Minecraft dot bat. Whoops, a <laughs> bat not bay. Uh, you want to make sure and select all files so that way it doesn't save it as minecraft.bat.txt because then it will not work. Um, you want to save that. Okay, now we are going to make our batch file. Okay, what we want to do is we want to enter the program that we want to run. The program we want to run is Java because that's what Minecraft runs on. Now we want to give a memory size. In order to do that, you put a dash, an X, an M, and an X. This means maximum memory. Okay. And then you want to enter a four-digit number. Um, I would recommend for right now going to 1524. That is, that is the default um, Minecraft memory usage, I think. Um, after that, you want to put a capital M for for uh, megabytes. After you do this, you then want to put a space. You want to put a dash jar for the jar file. And as you guys see right here, my Minecraft right here it is a jar file. It's not the the legendary Minecraft jar. It is actually my Mine Chapter launcher. So this is also ideal for Mine Chapter users as well. What you want to type in the box is minecraft.jar. Then you can enter pause if you do not want 
Then you want to enter pause. Uh, I have learned that no matter what you do, it's going to close it out anyway. It doesn't affect it. Um, then you want to save your file and you want to close it. Now, our Minecraft bat file is right here. So I'm going to run that now. Okay, it is giving you your proxy versions. Um, you may get some errors such as new launcher not downloaded. And see, it is launching my Minecraft. As it launches, it is not only it is going beyond just uh, powering it up. As you can see, um, it says here download jobs skipped as there are no files to download. Job resources finished successfully. And that is, and the reason why I'm highlighting that line there is because in the development console of the launcher it says the same thing right here and so that made me wonder what would happen if I just oh I don't know click play it gives everything to every file that minecraft is using even my texture pack which is Halcon Days by the way it is very very awesome Anyway, now as you guys can see, like on these, on your server, usually you'll have like an info instead of client in Swivir, and then you'll have your message here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my single player, I'm going to go to my world. Now watch, as just as in a server, it does the same commands as preparing your spawn area. It also loads your single player. Log in with your entity ID. Okay, it's giving you the same. Can't keep up due to system time change. Yeah, Jesus guys. Sorry guys, my Minecraft is messing up. I gotta do something. All right, there we go. Let's get off. And as we get there, it pauses. As we get there, note that every time I pause the game, it saves. See, it saves. So you can even track it while it saves. Yeah, I'm really getting that Norton alert. Um, and so yeah, so you can pretty much track everything that your Minecraft does. Um, if you issue a command like oh I don't know issue time set and then on zero. Whoops. Heh. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, anyway, let me insert correctly. Time set zero. Oh, whoops. Time set zero. It set the time for me. So it does track everything you do as far as commands in Minecraft. If you were to chat, like, I'm going to say, hi. It, told, it displayed how I say hi. That is, that is very handy. But anyway, so, no, like I was saying, it tracks your whole Minecraft game.